So if you have a vehicle and when you're driving and you go to step on the gas and you're accelerating and it starts to jerk, I thought I'd go over the causes of this and how you go about fixing it. And so first of all, a lot of things can cause this problem. There's many different components that can cause this kind of jerking when you go to accelerate. And so I'm going to break them down into separate categories and how you go about trying to figure out which category falls in so you can go troubleshoot what the problem is. And this is going to include things like the air going into the engine, like the air intake, the gas going up to the engine, the spark, the timing, and possibly transmission issues. And so the very first thing to do, if possible, is go scan the onboard computer for any OBD2 trouble codes, because this will help point you to what the problem is and what's going on inside the vehicle. There's a lot of low-cost OBD2 scan tools, some for like $20, $30. I'll put a link down below if you need one. You can also go to automotive stores. Many automotive stores like AutoZone or O'Reilly's or something like this, quite often they'll come out and read the codes for free and tell you what they are. And they're really easy to use. They basically just plug into an OBD2 port that's located up underneath the driver's side dashboard. And you basically just say, read the codes and it'll tell you what they are. And so for example, if you've got a P0101 code, you'd want to go look at the mass airflow sensor. Or if you got something like a P2635, fuel pump A, low flow performance. And so when you get these codes, you would know where the problem's at and you could go and start troubleshooting what the issue is. And so one of the things that can cause this is going to be something like a fuel related issue. And so this is going to be something along the lines like the fuel supply going up to the engine is weak. So that would be like a weak fuel pump or a clogged fuel filter. The throttle body might be dirty. There might be a bad throttle body position sensor and possibly dirty fuel injectors. And the most common method to troubleshoot whether or not there's a fuel related issue is to get a fuel pressure gauge and attach it to the fuel rail up on top of the engine. And then you check to see what the rated fuel pressure is supposed to be on your specific vehicle and you check to see if the pressure is correct. So for example, say that your vehicle is rated to be running at 60 PSI, but you check the fuel pressure and it's only running at 50, then you know there's a problem there and the fuel supply is weak. And so this could be something like a clogged fuel filter. This is very common, especially with inline fuel filters. Not all vehicles have inline fuel filters. Sometimes they're inside with the fuel pump, so not all vehicles have inline fuel filters. But if you do have low fuel pressure, then it's a good idea to go replace it because they commonly get clogged up and they block the fuel pressure. It's also possible that the fuel pump is going bad and it's weak, so you can go run some tests on it. You can also go check the throttle body and check to see if it's really super dirty because when it gets really super dirty, it, it could cause the engine not to run well and just cause issues and things like this. If it is really dirty, there's some throttle body cleaner that you could buy and you can use something like along the lines like a small toothbrush or something like that and you could clean it up real good because a really dirty throttle body that can cause problems, that can cause issues. There's also a throttle position sensor on the throttle body. And when these go bad, they can cause issues. So that could be something else to check. Again, when you're having issues like this, you're very likely going to get a code. So for example, if you got a P0122 code, that would be a bad throttle position sensor. So be sure to pay attention to any codes that you're getting. If the fuel pressure is good up to the fuel rail and you're not getting no codes for like a bad throttle position sensor or anything, then it is possible that there's a bad fuel injector inside of there. There's different ways you can go about testing these. But the next thing would be like one or more of the fuel injectors is clogged up and dirty and it's just not spraying fuel into the cylinders correctly. And then the next thing on the list is going to be like an air intake issue. And so with this, the first thing to go and check is going to be your air filter. Be sure it's not clogged up and really dirty or anything like that, because that can cause issues. Many vehicles also have a MAF sensor, and if this goes bad or gets dirty, then it can cause issues. Quite often, they just get dirty and they just need to be cleaned up with like mass airflow sensor cleaner or something like that. And that definitely causes issues. If there is an issue with the MAF sensor, you very likely will get like a P0101, P0102, something along these lines. But a bad or dirty MAF sensor can also cause this. And another thing that can cause this issue is if there's a vacuum leak, like a loose hose or a bad PCV valve, which is very common. And it can throw off sensors like the MAF sensor and things like this. And there's some different methods for trying to find a vacuum leak. But basically, just look at all the hoses, try to make sure everything looks like it's connected, not cracked or leaking. You can check that PCV valve and things along these lines. But the next thing that can cause this is going to be a vacuum leak. And so the next thing is going to be that there's a spark related issue for some reason. And so this could be something like a bad spark plugs. Could be something going on in the coils, like the ignition coils, or if you have a coil pack, it could be weak and it's just not putting out spark good. The spark plug wires can also be getting old and just not working well. And quite often when these components go bad, it's just age related issues. And so if you haven't had those spark plugs, the wires, the coil packs, or ignition coils changed out in a long time, then it might be time for a tune up and just replace all these components. Of course, check to see what the recommended replacement miles is for these components. But the next thing on the list is gonna be that is a spark related issue. 
And another thing that can cause this problem is going to be like there's a transmission problem going on. There's something going on inside the transmission that's just causing the jerking to happen. And quite often when you have transmission related issues, there's also other things going on when you go to shift or something like that. It's taking longer to shift or when it does shift, it's shifting harder or something along these lines. And so if you do feel like it's a transmission related issue, if possible, go check your transmission fluid. Some newer vehicles, you can't check your transmission fluid anymore. But if you can, go and check it. See if it's at the correct level and check to see if it's really super dirty. If the fluid hasn't been changed inside of a long time and it's really old fluid, then very likely it's time to be changed. And also the filter that's inside the transmission be swapped out with the new one. But the last thing on the list is going to be that there's a transmission related issue. And so that's basically it. I just wanted to give a basic overview of causes when a car is jerking, when you're accelerating, and how you might be able to go about fixing it. If you have anything to add, please comment down below. If you have any questions, ask me and I'll try to answer them. If this video helps you, please click like, please click subscribe, and have a good day.